Uh, and so phase two will be our 64 counties. Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach may seek approval, uh, have a plan, submit it through the mayor or the county administrator. And, you know, I would say, I mean, you know, there have been some good things going on in those counties. They were hit uh, a little bit more severely than other parts of Florida. But if you look at Broward, for example, I think their peak hospitalization was probably the second week of, of April for COVID patients. I think they were about 450 COVID patients. Broward now has under 200 people hospitalized, just general hospitalizations, not, not even ICU uh, for COVID. And so, so they've had some good trends uh, in places like Broward, but they're on a little bit different schedule. We've worked with them collaboratively. We're going to continue to do that as we go forward. So the changes will be restaurants have been able to, to do the social distance seating. They can seat people on a bar now if they want to with the appropriate measures. And then bars and pubs may operate at 50% capacity inside, full capacity outside, and it's gonna be seated service, uh, which is uh, what I think, um, I think Ohio did that, and I think that that makes a lot of sense, you know, as we kind of just inch into phase two um, to, to do it in a way that's, that's very, uh, very measured. Um, you know, obviously, we've had retail operating. The main thing is social distancing, sanitation protocols. We had a lot of retail operating throughout this whole thing, Home Depot, all these places. Uh, so not a huge change there. Gyms, uh, social distancing, sanitation, uh, those have been um, you know, open now for, for several weeks. Uh, so um, we want to obviously want people to be in shape. We think that that's good for, uh, for, for general health. Entertainment. So things like movie theaters and, um, and bowling alleys, uh, they have a 50% capacity, appropriate social distancing and sanitation protocols. Those had not been operating up to this point. Um, you know, they now have a pathway to do that. Um, and I think if you, if you do the distancing and sanitation like some other states have done, uh, I think it's probably uh, gonna be something that, that will work out for them. Paramutual facilities. So I think many people know Seminole Tribe of Florida, uh, they opened their Tampa facility. Now, of course, they have the ability to do, they don't fall under our jurisdiction. Uh, they had a lot of different things in terms of safety. It seems to have worked well. We obviously wanna give our paramutuals in Florida the ability uh, to present a safety plan uh, as a way to move forward. Now, this has to have an endorsement from the, the local official. Uh, so you see this and, um, you know, this will be South Florida would be interested in this, some other parts of the state uh, that have these facilities. And so it'll be similar to what the theme parks did. Uh, we just want to make sure that there's a plan and that, that people are adhering to the, the necessary safety protocols. And then the remaining personal service businesses that were not um, uh, operating, uh, Department of Health, has guidance, so if you stick to the Department of Health guidance, uh, you could do it. But again, you know, we looked at some other states. Colorado, Georgia had had this now for, I think, over a month. Um, seems to have worked out well if they follow uh, the, the, the appropriate health guidance. General guidance, and I think this is really, really important uh, to continue to stress for people 65 or older or, and sometimes and or, uh, with underlying medical conditions, strongly encouraged to avoid crowds and to take measures to limit the risk of exposure to COVID-19. You know, what we see on this is, if you give me a thousand infections with people under 30, the clinical consequences of that is likely to be much less severe than if we had 100 infections age 75 and above. And so it's really, really important uh, to continue to avoid crowds and to continue to limit the risk of exposure. And I would say even people who aren't in those groups, you know, be careful with, when you're interacting with folks who may be in those vulnerable groups because that's where you're really gonna see uh, the significant health consequences uh, of the virus. Uh, we also think that, and we've been doing this by sending tests, not just having National Guard show, but even sending self swabs to some of the long-term care facilities. But if you're working at one of those long-term care facilities, you, know, you really need to be tested on a routine basis. And sometimes the National Guard will come and do it. There's drive-through sites, walk-up sites. Obviously, uh, hospitals are helping us out with this, but really, really important because if a staff member is positive, that's how it's gonna get into these facilities and infect the residents. And so we really wanna do that. President's guidance had um, 
recommendation for groups of 50 or less, um, and so we're putting that guidance out uh, as well. Now, obviously, we see throughout the country groups much, much larger than that, uh, but this is the guidance, and so we are uh, recommending that folks avoid. If you're going above that, you have an event like a funeral or a wedding, I mean, do some of the things that Universal's doing, temperature checks, ask people who they've been in contact with. You know, those have been effective um, at creating safe environments, and so I, I would encourage people to do that. 